remind uh, there's two of them, so I'll remind everyone to turn your yes. as I just did. Finally remember to turn off my ringer. Can you get started? Are we all set something? Okay. It is six o'clock. We we'll call the order of the public hearing on um, the um, Ad hoc committee report on the town manager slash town administrator uh, committee. Um, Lorraine Hudson was the chair of that. If you want to make your presentation, then we'll open up for questions from the public. Okay, I'll try to be brief, but um, essentially, the, we had asked um, to start have this study based on the fact that we were concerned about the fact that Rollinsburg may not have a very robust support for its administrative staff. Essentially, what the committee decided to do was we took a look to see how other towns in this state of New Hampshire were handling this. And what we did is we identified 15 towns that had equal tax base and equal population to Rollinsburg. And from that, we tried to see how they were handling things. What we were surprised at was out of all those towns, there were 11 towns with professional administration. Two of them were town manager. The balance were uh, town administrators. One of the things that we were surprised at were the ones that had town manager had had, been, had, had town manager for several years, some 30 or 40 years, surprisingly enough. And the ones with town administrators, most of them had had town administration for quite some time, professional administrators. There were a few that were more recent. There were only four towns in our study that had neither. And by the way, one of those towns, um, as I recall, had had a town manager, and there was some reason that they weren't happy. I didn't ever, wasn't ever able to find out exactly what had happened. Of the ones that had had town manager for a long time, one of the towns had, in fact, voted one year a few years ago to get rid of the town manager, and the very next year they voted it back in. <laughs> so. Uh, in general, I think people were happy with the town managers or administrators. Um, the select board size in all the towns were either three to five, most of them were three. And we noticed that the ones with uh, uh, professional administrators or town managers actually had fewer meetings than the ones that didn't. They mostly were met on a either every two weeks or twice a month basis. So generally, the select board didn't meet quite as often. Um, basically, as to hours, most of the towns with professional administrative staff were open 37 hours a week on the average. Rollinsford is open 20 hours a week on the average, but um, only Fitzwilliam had fewer hours open to the public out of all the towns we did. Now, what we did then was we tried to figure out the administrative costs. Um, and what we did is we looked at the administrative costs of the various towns um, as a percentage of the 2017 operating budgets. And we did it as appropriated, not as actual, because it was that's what we had available at the time we were doing our study. The town managers' towns had, one had 28%, one had 11%. And most of them, we, what we tried to do was we tried to use the MS-737, and some of the towns had filed them at the time we did it, some hadn't. And what we were doing is we were taking certain lines, we took the administrative and financial um, lines to try to come up with these figures. Unfortunately, we also noticed that people put different things in those lines, and that made it a little harder. So what we did discover, though, was the towns with the lowest percentage, way lowest, were Mont Vernon, and the other really low one was Bethlehem. And so what I did, and you'll see it in the agenda that I handed out, is I was trying to figure out, because I had already talked to every single town and asked them how many people work there, et cetera, et cetera. And upon discovering that, we found out that out of all the people, we were probably the, had the least robust administrative staff. And as a result, I couldn't figure out how Rollinsburg would have been at around, I think it was like 19%, when, it, when in fact there were other towns that were lower, like Mont Vernon. So what I did is I went back and I looked at using exactly what it was that Mont Vernon and Bethlehem did. 
And when I did that, I looked at their actual salaries and their actual taxes for certain positions. And I used the same positions that they did when I did the figuring. And when I did that, Bethlehem, Bethlehem had already announced they were at 5%. Mount Vernon said they were at 7 When we went back and looked at it, we found out that using the exact same criteria that they did, not using the, you know, the broader thing of the 737, Bethlehem came in at 5.47%, Mount Vernon at 7.23%, and Romsford at 6.74%. Now just for a comparison, um, and, and I'm making this comparison for the purpose that um, we want to look at where we're putting our priorities in the town, is right at the moment, um, Rollinsford's total administrative support wages are 105855 for 2017 appropriated. And the same thing for the three top positions of the police are 177 149 And I think people are, are confident that our police department's being run the way they would like it to be run. And the fact is, we're not paying enough attention to this figure is the point of making this comparison. I think we should be looking at this figure more carefully. Um, as I said, again, because we have the least robust of the administrative staff, um, with a brand new select board, this gives us a critical point. And the reason I say this is because in the past, Rollinsford has really worked out. We have had some of the greatest people that have been able to spend their time and their education and their energy and devoted almost 40 hours a week to running this town, basically, as a select board member. In other words, what we've been doing is, is depending on what people are willing to volunteer to do the, to run the town. That cannot last because at the moment we have probably more information that we've got to be giving to the federal government, more information that we have to be filing with the state, more reports, more things to go with the DRA portals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And as we go through these things, what's going to happen is if we don't address this issue, we're going to end up with a problem that did happen to one of the towns, and basically what happened is they missed a notification required, and it was something they thought was a no big deal, and it shut down the town. We cannot afford to have that happen. The other possibility, obviously, is it will open us up to lawsuits, which would also be frightening. So we are at a critical point. Um, in addition to talking to the towns, we spoke to the stakeholders in the town, and this meant um, and I would like to invite you to look at our online report because on pages 4 to 22 we talked, we gave the results of our discussions at length with the police chief, with the board of selectmen, with um, the town clerk, with the tax collector, um, and also with the fire chief. And so the only one I missed was George and he said he didn't mind. But. The, the fact is, we spoke with all of them, and almost everyone agreed that we probably have certain areas that should be addressed. These are areas that can be addressed by a professional administrative staff, but the fact of the matter is, these are big areas. One huge one is this event calendar. This is really big. Right now, we have a situation where we have, right now we're changing over to SB2, as everybody knows, we voted for that last year. So that means there are some changes in how we're doing our reporting functions, how we have to get things to the DRA, how we have to do all of these <coughs> different things. And the schedules are changing. And because the schedules are changing and the fact that we have two budgets now to prepare, you'll have the default budget and the other budget, it's going to make it more difficult. So essentially, between that and all the other things that have to happen on a regular basis, not everybody knows. If right now, if something happens to anybody in the front office, we may all of a sudden start missing deadlines. And we're going to be in the position that we were, that one of those other towns was in, and that would be pretty, pretty sad for us. We've lucked out so far, but we don't want to just say, well, we can continue to skate along and hope no disaster happens. But this event calendar, as I say, is extremely important. Essentially, um, there are ongoing tasks that we have to do, and there are ongoing deadlines. And if somebody had a chance to put together the procedures that are necessary to do this, 
they might have already de developed an event calendar. Part of the reason that that hasn't been done is everybody's working on one fire at a time in our offices. Everybody's facing one emergency and another emergency. And that's been going on for years. And so basically it's very hard to put something like that together and everybody agrees it needs to be done. Another issue is policies and procedures. Now that sounds, well, what's policies and procedures? Well, it's pretty important that if we have an ordinance or if there's a law that people are supposed to be obeying, that we want to be able to have procedures and policies in place so if there's some sort of an ambiguity that we don't have to worry about the problem of, of how it's being applied. If you don't have the right procedures in place, you can end up with uneven application. And I don't think anybody wants to see the results of uneven application of any of our ordinances. I think that would end up with a problem, and if we end up with a problem like that, you're opening yourselves up for suit for the town, and I don't think we want that. Another issue is business procedures and redundancies. Now, I don't know if it's still true, but I do know that um, up until recently, um, if, any, if some, one person is ill and they can't be here, payroll might not get done because there's no redundancy in the, product, in, the, in the process. That's important. Essentially, no essential functions in town should be performed, should not be able to be performed because just one person is absent. You'd need to have redundancies. The way to resolve it is having somebody else in the office is available, trained to carry out the tasks when they're needed, and the procedures, the business procedures have to be put into place and make sure that they're reviewed periodically to make sure that all of these procedures and policies are, are efficient. You need to have an efficiently running office. Another issue, another issue is personnel management. Good personnel management actually requires oversight and essentially you need policies and procedures that are consistent when you're dealing with employees. Anybody that has their own business understands that. And it also, we have to we have to admit, it's a little harder when you have a volunteer board, but it, it has to be done, and it is done, but it's, it's a little bit more difficult. Job descriptions need to be made up with goal setting, support, and training, so all the employees that we hire can succeed in their, in their um, jobs. Another thing that we're looking at is organization of town ordinances. Right now, I think in the other room, there are plans piled up all over the place. I don't know if anybody can find a plan when it's needed. Um, all town ordinances and plans and agreements should be in places that everybody can quickly find them, so you know where they are, so we can do stuff. And if we can um, have ordinances, should be always reviewed on a periodic basis. If we don't review them, then we don't know if they're up to date or whatever, and then you don't know if they're duplicative, you don't know if they're in, con in conformance with the laws, as the laws are changing. So somebody needs to be looking at all those things. Um, a professional administrator would have that as part of their job, to go through all these things and make sure that these things are happening on a regular basis, because it is difficult. People don't realize just how much work there is just on the everyday thing, to do all of these other things, it seems it, it just gets out of hand if you don't have enough time or energy to devote to it. Um, as you know, and as I say, one <laughs> one town administrator, administrator that I spoke with during the investigation kind of said, "Well, you know," he says, "Most towns don't realize they may be one administrator away from a lawsuit." And I said, "What do you mean?" He says, "Well." A lawsuit can be really expensive, and the cost of an administrator is pretty inexpensive in comparison. And I said, well, probably right there. Um, communication. Every time our select board meets, we have to have communication to all the different department heads, and we want to make sure that that's good. But there's also um, the necessity that we also have to have communication with people with the um, with the building department and zoning department and all these other things. And because basically, 
what we're discovering is sometimes people apply for tax permit, I mean building permits and tax abatements and all these things. We should be able to respond to all of these quickly. Um, when somebody applies for a building permit, we should be able to tell them either you know it failed or it didn't fail or you need to do something else. And I understand from the front office that I've spoken with um, Andrea Cass, who works on some of these. She doesn't work on the building permits per se, but she's you know there's there's a timeline that we're supposed to tell people whether it's it's gone through or not. People are calling up and wasting a lot of time saying, well, what's happened with my permit? What happened with this? What happened with that? And that isn't really as satisfactory to run things because people can't do their other work if they're answering calls for stuff that have to be should be answered. We should have some sort of procedure to get these things out on a, on a regular basis. Also, um, if we can address all of these areas, I think that people would feel in general that customer service would be improving. So people will feel, you know, if I come to town hall, I am being responded to. My questions are being answered. And, you know, everybody will be happier. And I did notice also, um, I noticed that there are a couple of areas that the front office said are very, very sticky areas for them. And I don't know if the board has looked at those yet. And one was the elimination of the residence tax. Apparently, according to um, the people in the front office, there's more time spent on printing and getting out all the things for residence tax and then people come in and they want to register their car or something and they haven't paid it and they have to go through and find out that they have or haven't paid it and they're like, well I already paid all my taxes, didn't, you know, why didn't that get paid? So there's a big discussion about that. And then a lot of residence taxes are being, um, have to be um, prorated and given back to people because they come in, they rent an apartment for a month and then they move out and then they have to get their money back. So there's a lot of money that goes back and forth. And so for a $10 tax, of $10 a year, it may not be worth it. So, you know, we're going to look at some of those. And the other is the inventory of taxable property. And I do know in my report, I, you can look inside there. I know that the people in the front office have done some work on these two issues. And it is answered in the report that I filed. And you can find them if you would look online and you'll see what they've done. And it talks about what they did to research whether these are, you know, viable for us to keep pursuing these monies or an economically viable. So those are some of the things. And the next one is really important, and that's strategic planning. We have a board over the last couple of years that have done tremendous steps forward in dealing with strategic planning. And you know, they one of the things that they did, of course, is they got the capital improvement plan, which was a huge thing that had been. Um, there hadn't been any. Then we have the road service management plan, which has been really important. And then finally, they put in the 10 year financial projection. These things are absolutely critical for us to be able to determine whether or not your taxes are going to stay fairly level or if they're going to shoot up and down as emergencies occur, which we're trying to avoid. So I think that if our board has done these things, it's wonderful, but the problem is. Will every board have the time to do it and the energy to do it? And some of these things, with the help of a professional administrator, you might find that you'll make it easier for the board to make sure that these things are done. Which is bringing us to the final thing, and that is continuity. As boards change over the years, you're going to find that what has been an important thing for board members for one board might not be as important for others. So the focus of the board might be different as boards change. As, and one of the things that's really important is if you do have a professional administrator, that person would be there throughout this time and throughout the process and could remind people, this is the things you have to be doing in the future, this is what the last board was doing. You know, because I can't imagine any board coming in and saying, oh, I'm going re to review the last three years of minutes or something. I just don't see them doing that and having the time to do it. So it would really help to have some of these um, and it would help if we would have some continuity there. Essentially, the salary costs, according to um, the New Hampshire 
Department of Labor would be somewhere in the, in the Dover Durham area, somewhere between 53000 and 127000 a year for full time plus benefits. I don't know what this town will decide to do, but just if you had an idea of what it is, you probably should know that that's where the Department of Labor would be putting it. That doesn't mean you have to have a full, you have to hire anybody full time. Um, it'll be up to the select board to decide or to the town to decide. Because the question is now is whether you want a town manager or you want a town administrator. And the fact of the matter is, if you decide for a town manager, the select board has to cede some of their powers. It requires a change in government. You would have to vote on it next year or the year afterwards, whenever you decided to do it. Remember I told you where one town had had a town manager and they wanted to get rid of it. They had to go to the town and get a vote to get rid of it. And then they had to go to the town again to get a vote to, get, to reinstate a town manager. A town manager can only be fired, can be fired only for cause, and a town manager has statutory powers. Among them, they hire and fire everybody in the town pretty much. So essentially, again, you're ceding all of that stuff to the person who has been hired. And of course, there are other things that they can do. They'll approve payment of the bills, which is something right now that the board does. Um, they make the deals with all of the people that um, do business with the town, essentially, and they administer welfare. If you decide on a town administrator, you don't have to change the government. The select board does not cede any of its powers. And they, when I say can hire or fire at any time, most of the towns, what they do is they put together a contract with the town administrator and they spell out the duties that they want the town administrator to um, perform. And the contracts usually, as they start out, are usually a little shorter in term, and if they're happy with them, they might go to a longer term. But that's essentially what they've been doing, according to the different towns we've spoken to. So, essentially, that's, that's the, those are the things that we discovered. I don't know if you have some big questions in the back of the, um, study, what we did do is we included the law that talks about what the laws are for town managers. And you can look at that on your own if you wish to, because it is all online. Um, and it also there's a package in there from the Municipal Association about the differences between town managers and town administrators. So I hope that was somewhat helpful. <laughs> I have to thank, by the way, Kathy Lamb, who worked very hard with me on this project. And Dean Ehoff, Dean Ehoff, who also worked on the project. I mean, there's a lot of work done to pull this together. And as I say, we finally put together a report, and, and this is our presentation. All right, well, thank you, uh, Lorraine. Are there any questions from the board before we open up the public? Thank you to, to the three of you for all the work you put into it. I know it was a lengthy process. So. Any questions, please? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think I'm all set right now. Okay. Any questions from the, oh, from the public hearing portion of it? Any questions or comments from the public? Yes. Yeah. So you just, just have uh, to state your oh, name and address for the recording secretary. Uh, Sully Leopold, when you were in talking to all of these other communities, did you find that they had any difficulty in hiring or finding qualified applicants? They did. There is one town that I spoke to where they had um, recently had some issue and they were looking for someone, but they had said that they were planning to have one with, within a few months, But they and I asked them if they thought they would see any problems, and they said they didn't really think so. So that's all I can say as to that. Hi, Nancy. Nancy Dion, 44 Rollins Road. Um, along with the salaries that you're talking about for a town administrator, do any of the other towns have other bookkeepers or something under the town administrator so that would oh yes oh yes most of them do um most of them and if you look in the report i think i mentioned how many other employees they have but most of them have bookkeepers or a financial person to help with that um again uh there the towns are a little bit varied in how they handle it some town a couple of towns had a, a part-time administrator and and but most of them had full-time so it may be a thing that you each town, I think, should be looking at what they need to do. Uh, 
they need to decide what are the, what are the areas that I pointed out they want to concentrate on. And when they do that, then they can start determining what it is that they have to have answered. They can look and say, well, we need more people doing this, fewer that. Um, where I, I spoke with one town where they have lots and lots of building going on, they had more of their efforts towards building inspection and all of those things. So each town is different in those respects. Um, just to follow up to that, <clears throat> so do you anticipate keeping the town, um, having the town administrative position and keeping the current administrative assistant position? I'm not anticipating anything. But you're, <laughs> this is, you're I'm just saying I think you need, my view, my view is the town needs more robust administrative support. Mm -hmm. I think probably some of the towns have got like a full-time um, assistant or secretary along with the administrator. Um, and that secretary or, or whatever may or may not be a financial person besides. They, they, they kind of varied in that respect. So is it adding a position then? It may be. I, I don't know. It may well be. Because, again, most I, I saw very few towns that, you know, as we've got the building inspector. We have a few very part-time secretaries that handle, like, like these taking care of minutes and things like that. But aside from that, we have our tax collector, we have our um, town clerk, and we have the administrative assistant, and then we have Mr. Clark. Yeah. And that's basically what we've got. Um, and that's our staff. Almost nobody had such, you know, I, I spoke with a couple of towns and they kind of said, well, did you have just that? And I said, well, that's sort of what we have. And they're going, oh my God, and we thought we were bad. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, that's a, they're just saying they couldn't believe that we were operating with that kind of a thin thing. I think that's that's the thing. You know, it may be that we may decide, many of the towns had um, like a deputy clerk tax collector to help fill in and on that end, you know, that would be cross-trained for both positions. A lot of towns did that. Um, and almost all of them had either an additional secretary or financial person to help with the administrator. Any other questions or comments? Um, so, since there are no job descriptions for any of the employees, how did you determine the gaps for this position? What do you, what do you mean, the gaps, you know? The need for an administrator. Like, so well, we're looking at, uh, we were looking at the fact that we have a lot of things that are going on. Right now, there are so many, diff you know, like, just like the DRA portal alone, that's a pretty important thing that's going on. That takes a lot of time, putting this stuff through there. Each time we turn around in, in, as um, a town, more stuff is demanded from the state of New Hampshire. And the fact of the matter is, we have somebody doing a lot of that stuff, but when we had, for instance, um, when I talk about administrative support, for instance, when we were doing the bonding, I think, I, I can't even imagine how many hours our, our, uh, one of our select board members put into that. I would say easily 100 hours just to do the bonds and not even talk about looking at bonds, we had three different types of bonds, somebody had to research all those different types of bonds, somebody had to research um, how you do it, somebody had to meet with the lawyers, somebody had to do all that work. It was just an astounding amount of work. I can't imagine that we should be asking any of our present select board persons to do all that on their own for no money. That's just, you know, that's but just... They don't pay. Not a hundred, you know, a hundred hours <laughs> of work for, for what, 3,000 a year or something, it's not a lot of money. It's essentially, it's essentially um, a small amount. And I don't think any of the towns have um, administrators, excuse me, select board members that are paid much more than what we pay. It's in the same bailiwick. Talk but I think the, the advantage to having a, a more robust uh, administrative support is that you would be able to have a more diverse board. Because you won't have to say, well, I got to make sure that we have room for somebody who's old and gray and retired, <laughs> and say so that's going to pick up all the difference in the thing. You can't always deter, you know, you can't always have that. You might want to have some younger people on the board who would be able to do things and have their expertise in what areas that they have without being expected to put in a 40-hour week, which none of, I don't think anybody can really do if they work or if they have families. It's very difficult. So your, your advantage to something like that is you do it add to diversity of your board. And that's really important, I think, for a lot of people because 
The town is always different, and you want to have a diverse board. Questions or comments? Do I want? So I have a follow up to that. Sure. So when you, um, so have you kind of got figured out the delta between what the position was four or five years ago and what it is today? And I mean, has it like what's increased the requirement for this? Well, I, again, again, I think even even when Ed was doing this, he was do, he was here all the time. You all know that he was working all the time. And after he left, Suzanne was here working all the time. We can't keep doing that to people. It burns them out. It's exhausting. And we can't just expect it. And luckily, in both cases, we were talking about people with the education and expertise and the time. And you can't, again, you can't always guarantee that you're going to have that. These are elected positions. So let's, let's be realistic. So you're anticipating it will reduce um, the responsibility of the select board then? Well, I'm not going to say it's not reducing the responsibility. It reduces the amount of time that they might have to devote to doing their jobs properly. They will be doing more overseeing, as a, unless you go to town manager, but they would be doing more overseeing rather than doing the grunt work. You know, meeting with the lawyers, meeting with the country, going and reviewing the contracts and all these other things. That, you know, somebody else is reviewing all this ahead of time and saying, I've looked at all of these things, these are your options, do you want to, how do you want to vote on these, or how do you want to look at it? That's the difference. And I think it's a lot easier, and, and more in the expectation of the board members, that they can have someone that does that stuff ahead of time and presents it to them. Two, two real easy ones. How many total uh, paid employees of the town? Of this town? Yeah, about. Oh, I, you guys could answer, I mean, for the total number in the whole town, I don't know. If, the it varies her because the uh, on-call fire department is listed as town employees, so uh, if we're talking about just with the, I hate to use the word four, but I don't want to exclude those, those folks that volunteer for their time in their lives to say, you know, property and all. I would say between the police department and this building and the highway department, 15. And then this is, this is an easy one, hopefully. What is the select board's or select person's job description or charter? Or what, is it, what does it say? This is probably 300 years old, right? But is there a very, can you guys tell us briefly what your job is supposed to entail? Does it say something like run the town in its entirety? I'm guessing not. It probably says something like it's, um, make I don't decisions. I have a computer in front of me. I could pull up the statute. It is, doesn't quite put it quite like that, but it's pretty close. We have um, responsibilities for the, the, well, the welfare and well-being of, of the residents. Um, I don't what it says. We have fiduciary responsibility to administer the budget as approved by the town meeting, or in this case by the, <coughs> by the town meeting, the virtual town meeting, then we'll have it in the ballot box. Um, let's see. Overseers of the poor. We are the overseers of the poor. Um, there's a, if you're asking what is our what does my day look like, I don't know. I spent about three hours in here this morning going through bills, uh, going through the agenda for this evening, um, going through the MS. No, what is it? The, uh, what it was called? The MS4 permit, which I enjoy, encourage you all. If you, any of you have any doubts as to whether or not this town should. Uh, have more administrative, professional administrative support. You can find out what the MS4 will, will entitle. Well, will, 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 I'm not here to, I'm here to take public coffee, but you're asking me a direct question, I'll try to answer it. We have uh, responsibility to the EPA for require, reporting of outflow into the Salmon Falls River, unlike anything you've ever seen before. Um, the, the MS4 permit, we're one of the MS4 permitting towns that can actually um, uh, put wastewater directly into a river. Uh, Anyway, with it, it, it's going to take hours. <laughs> yeah. I encourage you to stay and listen to the conversation because it's going to be, if your eyes aren't glazed over, you should be running to the select board because um, it's going to be it's going to be quite the process we have to go through. And it's not just us; it's a number of towns on the sea coast that have to go through this. So there's a lot there's a lot to to the to, to being a member of the select board, right or wrong. I mean, I'm not going to give you my opinion as to whether or not we're going to go in any direction like this because I'm only one member. But I'm happy to take any more comments or questions from the public. Uh, so, Leopold, as I, when you were looking at towns with administrators and managers, how did the process 
um, expediate on like the policies and procedures and stuff. Was it like six months less, a year less? Did it vary? I, I don't quite get your like, question. We're saying our select board is too overburdened to do some of these things, like policies and procedures and job descriptions. Well, we've never done them. We have some of them, but we don't have any. For, for right now, a lot of things are just not done. We're just not been able to do them. I think that everybody's trying to get them done, but you don't get to it. That's the issue. You know, you try to put them in place, but they don't. You know, and they should all be written. They should all be looked at, and they should all be reviewed periodically. And that, that in, if you don't have them in place, you can't review them either. And, it, and one thing you could be doing is looking at what other towns do, having those reviewed, and then say, okay, we like this, we don't like that. Somebody could be doing that work. I mean, there's just all kinds of things like that. And when I say about the different things that I know Kim had asked earlier about stuff, I didn't even go into MS4 permits and things like that, and some of the things that the um, our select board members do besides, which I didn't mention, is they try to go out and meet with some of the other boards and commissions that help towns do things. For instance, um, the Stratford um, Regional, Planning Regional Planning Commission and things like that. All of those. I mean, you're not just talking about meetings here, but you're meeting with all these other commissions that they, they may be able to help you with issues. I mean, and, and if you go to all those meetings, or somebody can do that, you get an idea about, you might find out where you can get grants, you might find out where you can get help on something, and all, those kinds of meetings are also important. Anyone else? All right, one, one last one, and then we're going to open the select board. Um, so I would recommend that the select board um, take a step to define all of the responsibilities of this position. Um, and evaluate whether or not the current staff could be used to fill some of those gaps. Um, since they're only 12 to 16 hour a week employees, they may be willing to take on some of those responsibilities. Take under advisement. Anyone else? Thank you for coming. We're going to close the public hearing at 6.29. Back to